Well, welcome back to the Fly Fishing Podcast. I'm going to show you very quickly how to tie my variation of a John Barr nymph. This is a particularly good pattern for taking trout in the early season and also uh, white fish or chub. Uh, take a trailing later on as well. And what's uh, particularly effective about this fly, I'm using uh, UV uh, silicon, uh, which is a, a Loomis outdoor product wader repair kit. Um, you can get clear goo, etc., to do this, but this seems to be the cheapest way. It's the most accessible one for me at the moment, and uh, therefore I'm going to show you how to tie this. I use a camera uh, 175 hook. I'm going to debarb this. I'm going to debarb it before I tie the rest of the pattern. I'm going to do that by turning the, turning the hook in the, the vise and you can see if I turn it up the barb has gone. Now I think that's better to do that now than later on and break the point of the hook or bait break the hook completely um, that's a real bummer if you got to the end of tying a fly and you've broken off the hook and that's happened to me a, a number of different times 175 hook is uh, quite a hefty hook the one I used to use when I was fishing competitions it gave me a lot of weight to get the hook down when I wasn't allowed to use any weight on the hook uh, but if you put a, a brass bead on you're great for this particular pattern so I'm just put, putting a bit of silver wire there then I'm going to put some goose biops in and those are going to form the tail I want a little V in those like so Turn them over, put them on top of the hook, bind them in, bind them down. It doesn't matter how, how bulky you get towards a bead, that just helps the bead stay in one position. So those are being bound in. You can see there's a little bit of V formation there. I'm just going to wind back. For the body, I'm going to use a bit of uh, Amazon dubbing here. Now this is a bronze peacock. This is a, a real killer dubbing. The blend is superb. You come across particular items um, which you just know are going to catch fish. So I'm going to wax me thread it doesn't matter what color thread you use I'm just using a plain white thread here I'm just going to dub that on a bit of all this sticky wax which is probably a, a waspy product quite frankly I'm just going to build up the first part of that fly like so uh, so that's yeah the abdomen area then I'm going to put the silver rib through it nice and even nice and tight bring it to the back of that bead three or four turns in and then I'm going to wobble this like so and my only purpose of that is just to break the silver wire off so that's broken and we're looking now to start build up this thorax area. I'm going to do this in a couple of different stages. So first of all, I just want, want to be taking off a, a pinch of, again, this wonderful bronze peacock dubbing. I'm just putting it on a little bit at a time. I've waxed the thread. I also find licking the fingers helps apply the dubbing Let's dub that on nice and tapered there we go 
And before I tie that in, what we're going to do is we're going to catch in a bit of this wonderful pearl ribbing. Um, this is just a normal thick bit of pearl and it's going to fall on the wing the wing case so what we want to do here is cut ourselves a little snip tie it in just like that give it a bit of a catch doesn't matter if there's a bit going at the top I'm going to double mine and we're tied in a bit there Then we're going to put the legs in. Now, the fact we've tied a little bit of a dubbing in for the four racks means the legs will spray. I'm just going to take that behind the back of the bead, and you can see those they spray out. I guess a very sort of naturalistic impersonation of legs. I'm just going to wobble those slightly so they're a little bit shorter you see that they shortened a bit and then we're going to clear that from the bead keep it nice and clean snip it off we're going to do exactly the same on the other side once we've finished this we're going to put a bit more dubbing over the base of the of those legs just a wee bit that wee bit of dubbing does a, a number of different things it helps hold the fly together keeps a keeps a bead in place make sure the legs are caught within there and it also gives a buffer so when I go over to catch in the pearl it gives something for the, the thread to actually sink into now I'm just going to snip that off it doesn't matter the bit over the bead and it gives you a little bit of padding for your final set of whip finishes to go in uh, so they disappear I'm just going to put uh, two on here because I've uh, put quite a few underneath I'm using this white nylon micro foss which once you got anything like head cement or varnish on top uh, will just disappear very 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 easily but what I'm going to use is this Loomis um, or Loom wider repair I'm just going to squeeze a little bit on take it from the back of there smudge it in onto the bead once you've got that onto the bead there it makes it very very secure the whole top of that four racks and what I'm going to then do is use a, a UV light uh, it could be any UV light I'm just going to shine it on over the top there on the onto the sides rotate that fly I'll show you in the dark as well I'll turn the light off you can see the UV's picking up there. And we just turn it around. Now this cures very very quickly. It's probably cured already. And it goes not rock hard, but it goes nice and hard. And holds your fly together. And I found the leading way to repair probably the best. You, so you can hear that 
no, no tack in this and that's taking it from the, the back of the forex all the way into the bead so we've got one unit there it's helped hold the legs and the profile of this fly that little pearl hot spot really does increase the amount of takes you're going to get if you're going to take that pull and they dry up try not changing the pattern keep the pattern the same but just vary the tail different biops in that tail will give you different results they get locked into the pattern the, the, the actual shape of it but you can bring a slight change so you, you put an orange biop or an olive biop into it and these are just plain old Orvis biops I've, I've bought those will change your fishing for the day you can find out what sort of size they're after was it a 10, 12, 14 down to a 20, 22 and as long as you, you vary the, the tail colour each time you present that fly it will seem to be different to the trout and uh, you keep on catching um, a pool which seems to have dried up you just change your fly give it a go especially when you're fishing over wild fish you'll find out one cast they're very very keen on they want to know and the next you know you miss the fish they're just not interested change something slightly not just the size but you know just the tail color the the, the color of the legs even if you're tying this hot spot at the back you know, put a bit of uv floss in there um, give it a UV hotspot rather than the pearl hotspot and see what they think about it uh, I guarantee you if they're on that particular fly and it dries up just that minute change will bring you back onto the takes anyway come and see me at the fly fishing podcast um, like me on the, the Facebook site and uh, just let me know that you're out there. Tight lines, see you soon.